Hello and welcome. I'm Brian Cooley in search of the next big thing. By the end of this year, 2014, it's estimated that some 1.7 billion people will be using a smartphone. Pretty impressive number. Except in a world of 7 billion people and rapidly counting, it's still a smallish minority. The estimation now is that the next billion users will come on board and start using a smartphone because of one device feature in particular, cheap. This compact phone, large 4.5 inch screen, Firefox OS phone, a two megapixel camera. It's curved white body, doesn't look too bad. Get directions for you, search the web, coming very soon. This could be the perfect introduction. Today's typical $5 to $800 premium smartphone, no matter where you hide the cost of it, is a non-starter for hundreds of millions of people who are either in secondary economies or who are personally right now in a secondary economy. They are sort of off the grid in a world that has moved en masse from personal computers to mobile devices for so much of their computing, connectivity, and social behavior. CNET's editors came away from the 2014 Mobile World Congress in Barcelona convinced that just about every player in the mobile game has made low cost a high priority. Despite its low price, the Moto G feels well built. And like the Moto X, features a curved back that's comfortable to hold. Now if you're used to high flying, cutting edge smartphones, then this thing could be a bit of a shock to the system because it's absolutely tiny and it's very basic. But the upside there is that it's extremely cheap. Nokia says it's going on sale immediately around the world. It's going to be a low budget phone aimed at emerging markets. Now Huawei has said before that Y stands for you. And that mixed with Firefox OS means that you're looking at an entry level device here. Ultimately then the question is, does this tweaked version of Android really have enough apps to be tempting? You can pick this phone up from Vodafone for a mere £50 on pay as you go. The device is currently available for $49.99 without a carrier agreement. Okay, several trends I hope you spotted there. First of all, lower spec handsets. And I mean lower spec, not lame. One camera instead of two, perhaps. Uh, fewer megapixels. Two core processor instead of four or eight. Maybe a little less storage. A screen you were fine with a year ago. And lots of plastic everywhere. But none of that breaks the key function and premise of a smartphone, which is your digital life everywhere. Next is the lower cost platform focus. Now, Android is already basically free to handset makers, though they will pay a fee if they want to build in pre installed certain Google services. Microsoft just made Windows Phone free to makers of devices below the 9 inch screen size. That covers all phones and phablets. The Mozilla Foundation is showing a reference design for a $25. Firefox-based smartphone. Now, yes, the screen is fairly small, kind of crummy resolution, just two gigabytes of storage and a low-powered processor. But if you're coming off a dumb phone with a T9 right now, those are details. Finally, Samsung keeps dancing around this Tizen OS, which is based on Linux Mobile. The idea here is to go straight to the carriers and say, look, we can get together and make a phone that is pretty well functioned but keeping Apple and Google out of the mix, giving you, carrier, more flexibility. And I can assure you, those carriers will use that flexibility to go down market to capture new users. Then there's lower cost service. This is big because that is the biggest expense you have as a smartphone owner, over time, of course. That Firefox OS phone only runs at 2.5G network speeds, which is very slow by developed standards. But honestly, they've had all the costs driven out of that kind of network and communications technology, which helps to make the phone very cheap. And let's be honest, out there in the real world on your fancy 3G or 4G phone, how often is it really running above 2.5G speeds? There's a big trend toward bundling. These family plans, framly plans, multi-device data bucket plans, all of them tend to make more efficient the purchase of data where most of your smartphone activity takes place. And then there's the monthly no contract revolution. Even in a rich market like the US, we're at nearly a third of all phone users are now on a no contract month to month plan. That's remarkable. And a lot of it is about cost savings as well as choice and flexibility. Finally, there's a big push by carriers in many markets to use Spectrum differently, and this could lower costs as well. Moving a lot of the traffic off expensive, difficult, hard to provision cellular towers onto more Wi-Fi hotspots that are dedicated to carrying mobile traffic, not just portable traffic. In the US, for example, the FCC is taking a controversial opinion that it's time to redeploy some broadcast spectrum to those kind of purposes. Like so many technology revolutions, the smartphone era began with an emphasis on a flight toward quality, performance, an obsession with the gear and what it could do. 
followed by a very predictable second phase, another big lobe of users who are focused on convenience and cost.